You might be thinking, how can a team that was founded in 1996 and is younger than most of its players be a fallen giant? You'd be right, but hear me out. The Black and Red were formed in 1996 as part of the original 10 MLS teams. They played in the first ever MLS game against now defunct San Jose Clash and they lost 1-0. But despite this early setback, and they were led by the Bolivians Marco Echeverri and Jamie Moreno. If you don't know who Echeverri is, check him out. Some of the highlights on the MLS channel are absolutely insane. They were a force in the early days of the league. They made it to four consecutive MLS Cup finals between 96 and 99, winning three of them. In 1998, they also won the CONCACAF Champions Cup and the Copa Interamericana, which no longer exists, but was a competition between the winner of the North American and South American Champions Leagues, or Libertadores. After a terrible spell in the early 2000s, they won an MLS Cup for the fourth time in 2004, however they haven't made it to the final since. This is a longer time between cup finals than most teams in the league have even existed, the likes of Seattle are much newer, despite having almost the same level of success. However, the arrival of Wayne Rooney and the opening of the Audi field in 2018 did lift up DC United. Not quite enough to get to the level they used to be, but better than they were doing the previous seasons. Rooney's now gone, but 17,000 people still flock to every match to cheer the black and red on. So we have a team with a great past in a bygone era, a large set of faithful fans and a series of incredible legends. Why don't we quickly take a look at some of these legends? So DC United have something called the Hall of Tradition. It has, I think, six different people in it, but I'm only going to mention a couple of them. So the previously mentioned Marco Echeverri, also known as El Diablo, was a midfielder who played 191 games. He scored 34 goals and an insane 101 assists, which were both DC United records. He retired at the end of the 2003 season and he is no doubt DC United's biggest legend. They also had Jamie Moreno, also from Bolivia, who was the all-time leading goalscorer in the MLS when he retired in 2010 and he had 102 MLS league goals, which was, of course, the MLS record. So these are the two Bolivians, I think scouting Bolivia in a FIFA career mode would make a lot of sense, try and get some of these back. I believe you can scout that on the Youth Academy, so focus on USA and make sure you get a Bolivian scout in there to try and get these days back to DC United. Also legendary players for DC United was Ben Olsen, who played 10 years um, as a right winger and a left winger and then became the manager for 10 years up until the end of 2020 season when he was sacked after some bad results because of an injury crisis. While this does seem like a harsh way to get rid of a legend, he still does make it into their hall of tradition as both a manager and a player. Also in the hall of tradition is Eddie Pope, a defender who played 150 times for DC United in the same teams as Echeverri and Moreno. He also played for the United States over 70 times and was just generally a good defender and well loved in Washington DC. A couple of other famous players you might recognise are of course Wayne Rooney as I mentioned. He has that clip where he does a slide tackle, that amazing pass, you might have seen it. If not, make sure you search, uh, search for Wayne Rooney's DC United tackle, I think you'll probably come up. They also had the next Pele back in 2004, Freddie Adu. He played for them for over 100 matches, getting 11 goals. So they do have a decent history on the youth development side of things. So switching our attentions back to FIFA, they do play a 4-4-2 with Jordi Reyna and Ola Kamara up front. The defence in general needs an upgrade. They are getting reasonably young defenders, but they're not at the height of their abilities just yet. While well, they do have the ability to get up to top of the MLS level, so Canusi and Pines, for example, both can be MLS Cup champion level players. DC United don't seem to have a huge amount of potential in their squad outside of their defence. Bill Hamid's the best player they have, he's their goalkeeper. But outside of that, you're not going to find many people that can be a higher overall rating than him without some serious training. But with one of the highest transfer budgets in the whole of the MLS, you can easily afford some better players in the designated players slots. If you want to know a bit more about the MLS rules, check out my video on the MLS that I made a couple of months ago. Um, I'll go through the squad rules and where you should sort of be scouting that kind of thing in that video. So in conclusion, DC United are the second best team in terms of MLS Cups, with 4 wins from 5 appearances, only beaten by LA Galaxy's 5 wins from 9 appearances. Their last win was in 2004, which of course is older than most of the teams in the league. 
They currently only use two of their three designated players, so you can feel free to sign whoever you want as the third one. They've currently got Ariola and Edison Flores as their two different designated players. So if you sell one of these two, make sure you replace them with someone else who you can improve the team with. They tend to focus on Caribbean and South American players, so make sure you scout those areas with your normal scouts. They also have a couple of Estonian and Swedish players, so again, that could be another area that you focus. If you do decide to do a career on DC United, please let me know how it gets on, I'd love to hear. I do enjoy reading stories about people's career modes. So if you enjoy telling people about your career mode or you haven't got anyone to talk to about your career mode, just talk to me about it in my Discord, I'll put a link to that in the description as well. But if you did like the video, feel free to give me a like, and if you want to see more videos like this in the future, please subscribe. But that's all for today's video, I hope you did learn a little bit about a team you might not have paid attention to in the past. I know I certainly didn't until I started reading up on them the other day, and which is why I made this video to help teach some other people about them too. But thanks for watching, and goodbye.